Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about anarchy today and the final solution to regaining constitutional freedoms that have been lost. Today we live in a state of anarchy. What is anarchy? Anarchy is a condition of having no laws or agreements that apply universally to all. Most people believe that we as a nation are a nation of laws but that is not true and naive. Actually, those in government make their own laws up and enforce their laws at the point of a gun. In an interview with a local police sergeant in my uh, local police force, he openly stated that he determined whether a law had been violated or not. Think about that. He is making the law, enforcing the law, and determining the law, or becoming all three branches of government. Because if everything operates on his will, then he's basically like Judge Dredd. He determines what's going to be done and what's not. In, this constitutional, in his constitutional mandate, he is part of the executive branch entrusted with enforcing the law. So technically, he would need an order from the judicial branch as clearly stated in the U.S. Constitution, or in other words, the Fourth Amendment, require, requires a grand jury indictment or a judge issue warrant before an executive branch officer, that would be the cop, can seize you for committing a crime. Because otherwise, the executive branch officer would be determining a law was broken. That's not his job. Of course, this doesn't suit all cases well. For instance, what if the officer hears a gunshot and sees a man coming out of a store with a gun? He can arrest that man and question him based upon the probable cause he may have been involved in a crime. But he has to take the man before a magistrate, before a probable cause hearing, swear a complaint under oath in front of the magistrate, and have the judge issue a warrant so that then the man can be taken to jail and be held or released on bail. Or they can release him on his own recognizance. Today, that never happens, and no one is taken to jail routinely without a sworn complaint made first stating the facts and the crime committed and signed under penalty of perjury by the officer before a magistrate. One is literally kidnapped as no charges exist to make it a lawful arrest. In order to have a lawful arrest, you have to have a sworn complaint. You can't just arrest somebody and not charge them. Extorted money by the jail as no lawful charges exist, no warrant was issued, and the Constitution was violated by those that have a sworn oath to it, the government agents. It's extortion. If you, if you haven't been charged with a sworn complaint and you ask for money to release me, that's extortion. I mean, if there's a sworn complaint against me, then it's not extortion. But since they never swear out a complaint before they jail you, you know, you're always arrested and you're held on bail without any charges being sworn to by anyone. So that's kidnapping and extortion. I have personally lived through countless examples of laws being broken and my filing criminal charges against those who break those laws and having absolute no right to redress my grievance or have an investigation into whether the law was broken or have a warrant issued for the arrest of the party that I have a sworn complaint against. In essence, the law is whatever the cop the county recorder, the judge, the governor, the attorney general, the head of the DMV, the head of the CHP, the local sheriff, the local police chief, the county supervisors, the city council members, the animal control officers, the local police sergeants, the local CHP officers, the local junior college police force, the local city public maintenance officer, the county tax assessor, etc., says it is. The law is what they say it is, because not one of those parties has ever shown me 
why under the constitutions they have a right to do the things that they have actually done to me. I mean, I have sent hundreds of letters out, have entered defaults, have received fail, you know, received no replies, have issued sworn criminal complaints, have entered counterclaims in court that have been ignored and defaulted on, and not once, not once have I gotten any justice. No jury has ever been allowed to hear my pleas. No judge has ever given a finding of fact and conclusions of law justifying under what law he made his determination, which actually he's not allowed to do anyway under the law. That they issue orders with, without justification. This is the definition of anarchy. There is no law being followed other than what they claim the right to make the, the, their discretionary determinations any way they want and never have to discuss why and what authority they have for making those determinations. In the 60s, the cry was, question authority. That is true then as it is now. The answer is they never have any authority or, in other words, jurisdiction. The constitutions of your state and the United States are the supreme law of the land. It says so right in the U.S. Constitution. But what is a law? A law has no validity if there's no punishment for the violation of it. Imagine they passed a law that says it's illegal to murder somebody, but there's no punishment for that crime. A man is charged with murder, convicted by a jury, and then goes to free because there's no punishment mandated. In the old days, no punishment was ever mandated by law, and that is probably why there is no mandated punishments listed in the Constitution of 1787. If there is no mandated punishment, did people go free? No. A jury decides the law and the facts, and the petitioner or plaintiff asks for a specific punishment, and the jury decides whether that's fair or not. You could sue your neighbor for stealing your strawberries and ask that they be hung. The jury, in its wisdom, could find the neighbor guilty, but decline the punishment you asked for. The petitioner had better ask for a punishment that fit the crime or chance having no punishment issue at all. The California Constitution says right in it that it is mandatory and prohibitory. That means it is a prohibition on all government agents with an oath to it that they are prohibited from violating the Constitution. Yet that is a joke today. Virtually no agents are ever held to answer for violations when charged. The agents all clamor in their demurs that they have a right to sovereign immunity from suits against them. While it's true the state and the city have sovereign immunity, because although they are not sovereign, the people are sovereign, they are fictitious entities. The state and the city is a fictitious entity. They cannot work, cannot accumulate money, cannot act, etc. If the city pays out on a claim, it's really the people of the city that are paying out the claim. And the real perpetrator of whatever wrong was charged, say the building inspector, Bob Rafferty, pays nothing. My claim is if Bob is the one who violated the Constitution, then Bob is the one who should pay out of his personal holdings, as the city did not commit the illegal act. It cannot be, an art, it cannot be as an artificial corporate entity, and as an artificial public corporation, it also cannot order Bob to do an act. Imaginary friends can't issue orders, right? So Bob can't claim he was doing it because the city told him so. The city can't tell him anything. The city can't speak. Only the city councilmen can speak. And then they should be liable for what they say. So Bob can point his finger at his supervisor for issuing the order, and his duty was to comply or lose his job. But Bob cannot claim the city ordered him to act outside his mandate by the constitutions. Those in government are really a conspiratorial crime syndicate 
who masquerade as an upstanding authority representing the people. What is not understood is that this country is a constitutional republic and is not and is in a constitutional republic no representation is necessary. If they want to build highways and community hospitals they don't need to be my representative for that. But where will the money come from? I mean this country was founded without taxation of the people for the first hundred and half of its life, for the first hundred and twenty-five years, there was no IRS. So where did they build roads and hospitals then? You see? People believe naively the money comes from them and that the government has a right to tax them for the services it provides. You know, watch Mark Stevens' stuff. Mark Stevens' great claim is that do does the government have a right to charge for services at the point at the barrel of a gun right do I have to contract for services and do I have a right to choose the services I wish to receive in a contract where everything is written out or am I a slave that is forced to participate without my consent if we have freedom, then we are not slaves, and the constitutions, both state and federal, clearly state that slavery is prohibited. Yet we have slavery today, and everyone accepts it. The definition in Black's Law states slavery is when one forces another to labor without paying him for it. I can think of one government agency that fits that description to a T. Every year, the government, the papers come out, the newspapers come out and state that you have to work four months out of the year before you start keeping the money for yourself. Where does the rest go? The IRS practices slavery with the help of, ev of the police, sheriffs, judges, politicians, and every other government agent because they all have a conflict of interest in collection of the money. They falsely believe their master is the government and their paychecks count on collection. Both are false. First, their master is the people. They are public servants. The very definition implies a master-servant relationship exists. And since they are the servants, who's the master? The public, of course, and more exactly, the people are the masters. I can show countless court cases and quotes from the constitutions and codes that support these ideas, but we don't have months to go through them, and have, I have introduced them on my other videos. When we teach our children or our pets to behave, we are nearly always using a form of consequences to instill the behavior we wish to see. The judges in the courts obviously believe in consequences for actions, and so do I. Of course, you could try to salt, just love your ch child and lead by example, but your child may grow up serving themselves only and never giving up their notions that the world revolves around serving their needs. If that happens, you missed out on an opportunity to teach consequences in the formative years, and you can never go back. They're never going to be four years old again. So let's get on to my idea of how to fix this anarchy that exists today. My idea after appearing in court countless times is that the original common law constitutional system has to be restored and the people have to demand it. The way to enforce consequences for actions upon the government officials who have violated the constitutional rights of one of the people would be to charge them and have to have them answer in court. And the only way I come up with that can be that that can be done is to institute a law that states anyone who has an oath to the Constitution, in other words, the average person doesn't have an oath to the Constitution, so they couldn't be charged with this. But any government official who by by the constitutional mandate has to have an oath to to swear to uphold and defend the Constitution. And if you not if you're not going to swear to uphold and defend the Constitution, then what are you engaged in, right? You're engaged in treason, because treason is the overthrow of the government. And what is the government if it's not the Constitution? 
The Constitution is the basis of the government. The Constitution is the manual that the government operates under. If you don't have the Constitution, you have no government because government only exists by mandate of the Constitution. So if you're overthrowing the Constitution, you're overthrowing the government. And if you're overthrowing the government, you're basically overthrowing the Constitution, the Constitutional Republic. So if you're trying to instill a communist form of government here, where the state controls all property, that would be a overthrow of the government. Does the current system operate as a communist uh, organization? It does, in my opinion. If you read the Ten Planks of the Communist Manifesto, all property is owned by the state. And today, the fact that the Supreme Court of Colorado determined that your car is your private property and that your private property can't be taken without due process according to the Constitution and due process is a court case, then the fact that they can uh, impound your car shows that they feel that they own it. They're not violating the Constitution, they own your car. And under common law, you can take what you own. So they believe, the state believes that it owns the property. As a real estate agent, she understood the fact that the state owns all the property. And I said, isn't that a deception when you sell a house to somebody and you say you're the owner? And, you know, what could she say? I mean, if you buy a house and you're a real estate agent and you know that the state owns the property, how can you state that you're the owner? If you're the owner, then you're the owner. So I'm proposing that it become a mandatory felony with a minimum of three years in prison for any government agent who is convicted by a jury of 12 local people for violation of the constitutional rights of one of the people. There could be no demurs or motions to dismiss ruled on by a judge or magistrate, as is currently the case. And once charged, only a jury could dismiss, only a jury could decide the outcome. No jury determination could be overturned as the, by a judge, as the Seventh Amendment clearly states, and the case would have to be tried under common law. There could be a punishment for making false accusations to limit vindictive suits from being heard, but the jury pool would be selected like a lottery number from a box of 200 random names or members of the community by the plaintiff themselves. So you could just reach into the box and randomly pick 12 people. Otherwise, the government would select their own jury like they currently do in IRS cases. I mean, if you're going to pack the jury, then obviously if all the people on the jury are government officials, then they're going to be prejudiced against you. Once you started getting a few convictions of public officials, the rest would shape up and act like the servants they're supposed to be and be very gun-shy about any violations of your rights that they have a sworn duty to protect. Would that be fair? Well, hey, if you want to apply to be a government official, then, uh, then do your duty. I find it absolutely amazing, unbelievable, that in today's world you have to pass a test, you have to study to become a contractor to work on somebody's house. You have to pass a test to drive a car. You have to pass a test to do just about anything of importance. Everyone who becomes a member of the legislative, executive, or judicial branch of government has to have a sworn oath to the Constitution. Why isn't there a test to determine whether that party has read the Constitution? And if they fail the test, they can't be elected officials because the first thing they should know is the Constitution. It's not a huge, giant book. It's pretty small. So. There should be a test on the Constitution required before a government official becomes and holds office. And he should be clearly cognizant of all of what the constitutional rights are for the people. So that he would know he took the test, he wasn't doing it without first-hand knowledge that he was violating a right, and if you accuse him of violating a right, he would have to 
consider whether he was violating that right or not before he acted. Things would change overnight. But until there's consequences, I love how the government wants to make consequences for us. Every time they pass the law, there's a consequence associated, but there's no consequence for violating the Constitution. And until we fix that problem, until there are consequences for violating the Constitution, and those consequences are suffered by those people that are doing the violating. You know, I had an animal control officer tell me one time that he had to charge $175 to give a dog back. And I said, you under the, you're violating the Fourth and Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. And he admitted that he had an oath to the Constitution and he wasn't intending to violate anybody's rights, but the county told him he had to do that. And I said, no. I said, look, you personally are violating the rights. And if you violate the rights, you're going to owe me $10,000. And I served him a paper. And he made a copy of it, stamped it, received. So he knew that the, that the payment to get the dog back was being made under protest and that he was agreeing to pay a fee of $10,000 for violating my rights and demanding that. And he did it anyway. You know why? Because he knows that he will never suffer any consequences for that. I could put a lien on his house, I could do all this kind of stuff, and the only person that's going to suffer any consequences is me, because I'll be labeled a paper terrorist, even though the crime is being committed by him, because it's a crime to violate the constitutions. They're mandatory and prohibitory, and it's treason is what it is. And that punishment for treason is death by hanging. I personally think that's way too severe for violating the Constitution. But technically, if you're violating the Constitution, you're attempting to overthrow the government. There's no other word for it. If you're going to violate the Constitution, you're overthrowing the government. Because that is the government. The Constitution is the government. The government isn't whatever group of people are in power today. Unless they're all guilty of treason for forming their new government <laughs> that isn't operating under the Constitution. So I hope this helps a little food for thought on how to fix the problem. This my my idea of the final solution. Thanks for watching.